Welcome to the Deep 404. Uh, the United States is becoming, in my opinion, uh, very cautious. They are worried and for good reason. Um, just, just this week, two days ago, the Iranian president, Ibrahim Raisi, travelled to Saudi Arabia. Uh, this is the first visit by an Iranian president to Saudi Arabia in over 10 years. Um, this has occurred because of the reach and the rapprochement between Saudi Arabia and Iran and attended the Arab Islamic Emergency Summit of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Um, while there, he met with Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salem, uh, MBS, uh, and met with Egyptian President uh, Abdel Fattah el-Sisi for the first time. Also in attendance there, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, Turkish President Erdogan, um, Palestinian Authority Leader Mahmoud Abbas, and Qatar's Emir uh, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad al Thani. The at this meeting, the group rejected the premise that Israel's response to the Hamas October seventh attack is self defence, and they declared that all arms sales to Israel should be halted. Now, Israeli arms sales um, are interesting. 70% of arms purchases made by Israel are made from the United States. So almost 70% of the Israeli arms is supplied by the United States. About 24% is in the second largest supplier of arms to Israel is Germany. Then Italy... Italy supplies about 6%, and then the remainder, um, the UK and Canada, seem to provide some level of arms support, although tiny compared to Germany and, and the US. Uh, interesting on the flip side, the largest purchaser of arms from Israel by a factor of four at about a bit over a billion dollars a year's worth um, is India. Uh, then Azerbaijan, the Philippines, and the U.S. So the, the U.S. are the largest supplier of arms to Israel, 70% of our, Israel's arms. And the U.S. is the fourth largest purchaser of arms from Israel. Um, just going to jump to something on the, on the monitor here so we can just have a look at this. Unfortunately, I can't hide all of myself. Yes, I can. I can do this. There we go. Save you look at my old scone for a while. Um, so those Israeli arms sales, you know, to 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 Israel positions the Israeli military, as we can see here on the screen. Now this is from Al Jazeera, uh, but it's just a breakdown of roughly what Israeli military looks like. One hundred seventy thousand active personnel, four hundred sixty five thousand in reserve. Now, some of those reservists obviously have been called up over the last month or so. Um, 2,200 tanks, 500 artillery pieces, 340 aircraft of those, nearly 200 F-16s, 80 F-15s and 30 F-35s plus 140 helicopters and of those, 40 or so are Apaches. Um, some 50 patrol and coastal naval craft, and then five submarines. So the Israeli um, military is substantial um, and in the area very substantial, particularly if we do consider the fact that it appears likely that Israel also is... Um, in ownership of estimated 80 to 90 um, nuclear weapons, 50 of which are thought to be deliverable via cruise missile, ballistic missile, and um, the remaining 30 or 40 um, deliverable by some of those aircraft that they have in their arsenal, 340 um, ground attack fighter aircraft. Now, if we look towards the 
the future. So there's been this meeting, um, this meeting of the Organisation of Islamic Cooperation, where we've seen all the heads of the major uh, Arab and Muslim uh, nations in the area uh, present at this meeting. They've said the arms sales to Israel they believe should be stopped and they don't accept that Israel's response is considered to be in self-defence um, against Hamas. Um, considering the future, if we look towards what might happen when this immediate conflict ends, if we assume that it might end in the short term, in that um, if we assume that Israeli ground forces will eradicate Hamas fighters and the conflict will then stop. Now, US Secretary of State Tony Blinken believes that the Palestinian Authority should have some central role in this. And Tony Blinken met with uh, Mahmoud Abbas earlier this month where they discussed that and he expressed his belief that they should, the Palestinian Authority, should have some role in the governorship of the um, Gaza region at the end of, a con of this conflict. However, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu disagrees, and his position is that Israel will control the area. Um, and some of his senior military um Officers have stated that they believe that this would go for at least a year, that Israel would effectively reoccupy Gaza. Um, there is reports in the Times of Israel, they're actually referring to a piece that was written for the Wall Street Journal by two Israeli lawmakers, um, Danny Danon, who is a member of the ruling Likud party, and Ram Ben Barak from the opposition party, Yesh Atid. Um, these two opposing lawmakers uh, wrote together uh, that they have called for, quoting countries around the world to accept limited numbers of Gazan families who have expressed the desire to relocate. So in effect, they are suggesting in the Wall Street Journal in America um, that nations, European nations in particular, should accept as refugees Palestinians who wish to leave Gaza. Um, they have stated that the international community has a moral imperative and an opportunity to demonstrate compassion help the people of Gaza move towards a more prosperous future and work together to achieve greater peace and stability in the Middle East. Interestingly, the pair did not call for a ceasefire. At present, there are reportedly 800,000 displaced residents of Gaza. Uh, of a population of approximately 2 million, just over 2 million, 800,000 predominantly from the northern area of Gaza, are now considered to be displaced within their own ho homeland. Um, I think that this statement from these two Israeli lawmakers is a demonstration of just how, of the depth of this conflict and how difficult a true resolution in the future may be to come by. They are saying that uh, European nations have a moral obligation and, a com and should show compassion by accepting refugees from Gaza, while at the same time their government is conducting an ongoing bombing operation of the civilian population of Gaza, forcing and causing the refugee issue here. So we're getting, um, we're obviously got a a large and growing conflict here. Um, what might happen? What might happen if we were to move into a say a full ground war in Israel? And this gets me to where I was starting out that the U.S. is becoming concerned. Uh, the U.S. is becoming scared. So, just some numbers, just briefly here. Israel has about one hundred and seventy thousand active members of the military, and 465 in reserve, 465,000 in reserve. And so a sum total, somewhere near 635,000 people in the Israeli military. The US in the Middle East 
has approximately 45,000 troops stationed throughout the Middle East. Um, when we look uh, at Iraq and Syria, the numbers there are very small. The total there is about 4,500 combined. But in total in the Middle Eastern countries, the US has about 45,000. So you have a combined total of Israeli and US forces in the Middle East of about 680,000 personnel, roughly. Now, if we consider a, a ground war in Israel where the Arab nations, Muslim nations unite, then you can start to count that Hamas has somewhere around thirty to 40,000 reportedly uh, fighters, soldiers. Lebanon, again, different numbers depending on which source you come from, but roughly the Lebanese army itself has about 84,000. And Hezbollah, there are reports from Hussein Nassar, that there may be 100,000 Hezbollah fighters. Now, at this stage, the Lebanese army isn't particularly happy with Hezbollah um, because of Hezbollah's interaction and skirmishing with Israel at the moment. But if this were to turn into a conflict where Israel begins to um, strike upon Lebanon more comprehensively, then it's likely that the Lebanese army as well will join and you will have 184,000 possibly in Lebanon. Syria has a 170,000 active military force plus maybe 50,000 reserves, so 230,000. Iran, 610,000 in the military, active, and another 350,000 reserves, so 960,000 in the Iranian military. And Turkey, a million, a million in its military force at the moment, and, and with the ability to increase that. So just those rough numbers there, just considering those nations, they're not considering what might happen if Saudi Arabia or Yemen or Egypt decided to join but you have Israel and US with forty five sorry, with six hundred and eighty thousand military personnel in the Middle East and at a lower limit of two and a half million Arab and Muslim fighters within the region, which is a three point seven to one ratio. Now let's just go back over here for a second. Let's just have a look at this map. Okay, the Middle East. We zoom in here a little bit now, and you you will start to be seeing where I'm going with this, I'm sure. So if we look at this, if there were to be a ground conflict that started here in the Middle East, the challenge, the real challenge that the US has in supporting Israel is that they have no way to get to the Middle East safely. Now, in the past, when there's been conflict in Iraq, the US were able to base themselves in other areas. Uh, they were able to travel safely to, and build up their forces in the region. If we're in a situation where the Arab world, Muslim nations, have combined together, then Israel is completely isolated. With being surrounded by Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran to the east, Turkey to the north, Yemen to the south, the possibility for those 680,000 combined Israeli and US forces in the region being surrounded is an inevitable in the situation. And this is why the US is very concerned about what is going on here, particularly with Israel and their, to, their engagement with Hezbollah, because if Hezbollah joins this fight, then the dominoes may start to fall, where you start to see Iran and Turkey and other nations joining in. So while the Israel is a strong nation, we looked at its army before, and it's got you know it's got its six hundred and thirty thousand people in the military there. It is isolated. Geography plays a role in war here. The only way, if the Arab nations unite, the only Muslim nations unite, the only way that Israel 
can be supplied, resupplied, restocked, evacuated is through the Mediterranean. And now even the Mediterranean is going to be a challenge if we're in this scenario of a Muslim world uniting against Israel. Turkey to the north, uh, Egypt to the south, Libya to the southwest, trying to get U.S. Uh, Navy craft safely into this range is going to be difficult. Um, what else will happen here is that we will find that Iran will shut down the Persian Gulf. Now, if Iran shuts down the Persian Gulf, that is turning off oil supplies to the U.S. So at a time when the U.S. is in a critical position of needing to defend Israel, it will be caught between difficulties in accessing the area via the Mediterranean, no ability to access via the Persian Gulf, no oil coming out to America via the Persian Gulf. The Red Sea, the same thing. Just just today, the Houthi uh, leadership from Yemen have announced that as of the time of them sending their announcement today, that they are willing to attack any Israeli naval craft in the Red Sea. So they've made this announcement today that if they see Israeli Navy in the Red Sea, they will attack them. Now, the Houthis from Yemen have already been active with missiles in this conflict. Um, reportedly, a couple of weeks ago, they were firing missiles towards Israel and they were shot down by the, it's the Carl Vincent, I believe, a US um, naval craft, which is in the Red Sea at the time. And they have just, again, earlier today, fired a missile towards the south of um, Jerusalem. Now, that missile has reportedly been shot down. So if this conflict w were to kick off, there is an initial period of time where the US and Israel may have some superiority. If there are, let's say we get four US aircraft carriers in the area, carrying with them their, um, their full complement of fighter aircraft, all the weaponry that they have, their submarines in the area. Now, I believe some of these American submarines can fire up to 100 um, cruise missiles. America has missile and air superiority combined with Israel initially. But they have challenges there. Again, the um, if the Muslim and Arab world are uniting against Israel, they won't just be targeting Israel. There will be efforts made to target U.S. aircraft carriers in the region. Um, there will be efforts to target submarines, if at all possible, in the area. And so, while the U.S. will have firepower, that firepower may rapidly run out and suffer from the same issue of uh, resupply challenges. Um, as we've seen in the conflict with Ukraine and Russia, Ukraine is continuing to survive and hang on, even though it has been suffering from over a year of continuous Russian missile strikes upon factories and infrastructure and military locations. So after the first month of American strikes, there is still the entire remaining um, Muslim and Arab world capable of amassing millions of men to move westward towards Israel. Um, so this, this is why the US are getting scared here. And this, this is why they are not boots and all in supporting Israel. They're not aligning with Israel in their, in their speech. They're talking about an end to the conflict, and they're talking about Arab 
control of the area. Israel's talking about Israeli control. The US are talking about um, Hassan Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah, as speaking measuredly, uh, whereas the Israelis are acting in and speaking in terms of escalation with military commanders in Israel suggesting that if Hezbollah become involved, then Israel will do to Beirut what they have done to Gaza. So the US growing concerned about this because they understand that if the Arab and Muslim world does unite against Israel, then the US will not be able to save them. The US will not be able to save Israel in that situation or in an attempt to hold off what will become inevitable for Israel, Israel may turn to the use of nuclear weapons. And then nuclear weapon use in the area, as we've said before, would then likely see Turkey receive weapons from Pakistan and they would be used against Israel. So Israel, obviously very emotional, in a very stressed situation, existing where they do within the Middle East, surrounded by Arab nations. They need to measure their response and I believe alter their current response very quickly or they will find themselves in this position where their response to the Hamas October 7th attacks on Israelis will lead to a unification of the Arab and Muslim world against them. And once that has begun, there is a very good chance that it won't stop and nobody will be coming to help in a ground war in Israel, because when you look at the map, there's just no way for them to get there. Okay, thank you. If you've watched it this far, I hope you're enjoying the channel. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, like and subscribe. I'll talk to you soon.